Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I am Chris, and this is a quick look at Pixel Wheels. Uh, it's an open source racing game uh, released under the GPL3 license. Uh, so as you can see, it's a top-down pixel art racing game, similar to what you might remember from your micro, mach um, yeah, micro machines franchise. Um, and the controls, oof, that was bad. Um, feels somewhat similar to the earlier Grand Theft Auto games. It takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, as I, I always find it feels when when getting back into a uh, top-down racing game. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a fun little jaunt uh, available on uh, on the Itch store. Uh, that was a terrible start, and I probably won't be spending too much time playing this game because really, when it comes to racing games uh, and taking a look at them on YouTube, it it, it doesn't really show. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to show how they feel because to me a racing game is it's about the feel it's about the the sensation of, of, of driving fast and reacting to to you know immediate obstacles and things like that um, but yeah uh, it's uh, it's a really good game one thing about uh, running it on itch that I did notice was that uh, when I click launch it didn't launch the uh, the the Linux version, but what I had to do was just open up the installation in the uh, in, in a file manager and just double click on the executable. Uh, for some reason, the itch launcher is pointing, I assume, to the wrong file. Uh, I don't know if this would be the case if you just ran the Windows version through Wine through through itch as well. You can do that, and and to be honest, whenever you come across a few issues with Linux in itch, uh, just running the Windows version through Wine seems to do uh, pretty well. So um, yeah. Uh, I am not doing so well here. Let's try something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more challenging. Oh, but I did unlock the harvester. We can have a look at that, can we? Um, so, of course, you've got uh, you've got multiplayer and, and quick race and championships and all that kind of thing. Um, but mostly, I've just been having a go on on the quick race, to be honest, and, and having quite a good time. Um, you can consider this much more of a, a first impressions than an actual comprehensive review. I'm probably going to be playing it a little bit more. Oh my word, this harvester is a bit faster, but also mm, more difficult to control. Mm. Like a bit, bit more advanced there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Have I got it? Um, but yeah, you know, it's kind of fun for what it is. Um, and especially if you can uh, get to grips with the uh, the top down. Oh, I've, 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 I've screwed, screwed the race there, and I? Uh, it does give you, of course, the typical Mario Kart type power-ups as well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's what you would expect from 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 what you can see here. And uh, if you're looking for a for a quick bit of a, a racing jaunt, then uh, then yeah, I can uh, I can point you in this direction. Um, so, of course, with this uh, ludicrous channel being relatively new, I'm still working out what kind of stuff I'm going to put on it. Um, it's going to be covering exclusively open source games, uh, but I don't know necessarily what format the videos are going to be, so I'm going to probably try out a few different formats over the, the coming weeks just to see what feels good, and, and, and maybe I'll mix it up with a variety. Any suggestions, please do uh, leave them in the, in the comments section below. Uh, it might be the case that I just pick a random uh, open source game, play it, and then perhaps uh, turn it into a little bit of a, you know, like a... a all-purpose commentary on on maybe what's going on in the world of open source gaming, and just have a bit of a a bit of a, a ramble, bit of a chat on about what's going on maybe in the wider course of things, or maybe it might just be a series of quick looks where I just take a quick look at a game and uh, and let you know uh, you know the basics of it. The thing is with open source games, comprehensive reviews uh, may not necessarily be the best thing that you want because in reality the games are so accessible you just pick them up and play them. So maybe it might be more beneficial that I just point you in the direction of something that I think might be appealing to some people. Like this for example, like you almost certainly have a pretty good idea in your mind about what kind of game this is and the, the deciding factor as to whether or not you might like it is whether or not you like top down racing games or whether or not you... Um, you necessarily like the feel and control of the vehicles. To me, that's quite a quite a big thing when it comes to racing games. Also, I quite like that, like the atmosphere of a racing game, as well, uh, is something that really sort of brings me in. I quite like uh, rally games, for example, because it, it just it just has a kind of like the, the the you know bombing a car through the country type of thing is just very very uh, appealing to me. Okay, three. I'm, I'm I'm third place on the on the harvester. Impressive. Thank you, yellow car. 
so yeah if you have any thoughts for the format of the, these videos please let me know um but um but yeah perhaps perhaps it might you know i might share some thoughts on uh, on on sort of open source stuff why well, i think open source gaming is something that is uh, is interesting or, or worth taking a look at as well because many people think seems to think that it stands aside from from other open source projects other open source projects are, are important because they're tools and they're useful and all that kind of stuff and i drown um oops oh i uh, ooh, okay i've royally lost this uh, this race um but also i think in in regards to you know and and when it comes to open source games as well they're not all one and the same Many open source games are, uh, are individual projects, but some of them are, uh, are a, a collective effort that do bring people together. Which are, you know, and some, for example, like the Battle of uh, Battle for Wesnoth, for example, it's um, a collaborative project that has, has been spanning years, and um, I think is really strong for it. Uh, but then a lot of uh, open source games are going to be like you know small one person projects or two three people projects that were constructed in a game jam. But then I've had a lot of fun from Game Jam games as well. It's a, it's a different corner of gaming that, well, one that I don't think is, is comprehensively covered. And, and it's because I think in a lot of cases it doesn't bring in views, right? Like, it's very easy. I can make Fortnite videos. People know what Fortnite is. And the brand of Fortnite strengthens, you know, uh, viewership and things like that. Hey, I came first. Not bad. I should talk about Fortnite more often. No, that's a joke. Don't take me seriously. Um... Let's try a different track, but um, but really, because I'm I'm not going to be monetizing this channel, and I'm not going to be you know seeking this as anything other than just a little hobby side project. Um, I think it could be fun to actually cover games that that aren't going to be covered elsewhere on. Oh, Jeep! Uh, elsewhere on on, on video games uh, in on video game channels. Um, oh, crumbs! This is the camouflage. See. Completely, completely threw me off. Uh, so yeah, mm, these cars. Interesting, you have these cars handle some substantially more differently than than you might actually expect. Um, well, I mean, yeah, a Jeep is obviously going to handle differently than a combine harvester. But uh, in terms of just this, like this game, I think I think there's like there's been a little thought put into the into the differences of vehicles. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. So uh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I do tend to drift more towards the old 3D racing games, but it, like I say, like the thing is with open source games and, and, and free-to-play games as well, although free-to-play games come with their own challenges, right? Like, for example, you know, like you don't want the advertising and the tracking and the the, the more subtle monetization of your traditional freemium free-to-play games. Uh, open source gives you, you know, the the sort of the good stuff without having to put up with the with the bad, so... But yeah, you can, you can pick this up, you can play it. Um... I believe there are ways to support the development of it, and uh, I always recommend you at least check those out to see what can be done. But um, yeah, uh, this is kind of—I'm actually not, I'm not, you know, I'm not having a bad time here. Fourth, obviously better with the combine harvester. Anyway, uh, like I say, this is going to be a quick look kind of video, but you know, maybe in future videos I might spend a little bit more time sharing my thoughts on on various different. Uh, aspects of uh, video gaming, open source video gaming, all that kind of stuff. But I think what I want for this channel is this to be just a little place where, you know, like open source and, and, and free software games can just like have their place. Um, have a little, you know, have a little spot where they're not necessarily, you know, um, oh yeah, where they're recognized and appreciated. And that's kind of what I want to do with this channel. So, But like I say, I'm still working out how it's going to work, how it's going to function. I know what the subject matter is, and I kind of know the, the themes and the values of this channel. But uh, how they'll present it, I'll, I'll work that out as we go in the, in the weeks ahead. But thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure, as always. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, in case you're wondering, I will probably do, I will probably have face cam on other videos, but uh, my hair is an absolute mess today, so that's why I'm, I'm foregoing it. Just, just in case you were wondering.